Welcome to another Ref Show. It's focusing on the FA Cup and we did indeed get our magic, our shocks, our romance even, uh, towards the end of the competition. We also had some savoury, unsavoury incidents, shall I say, as well, in the third round of the Cup. So where do you draw the balance? Dean Maharib, Keith Hackett. Keith? Well, I, I think from a refereeing perspective, Alan, it's the one part of the season when you hope that you're appointed to a third round of the FA Cup because you know that it's going to be a challenging game Sometimes the Premier League clubs against lower league teams, great crowds, great build-up. It, it is a romantic competition mm. and it's one that has to stay. And, and for me, looking at the screen this weekend, uh, seeing all those kids, parents taking children to football, it might be very much their first game mm. that they've attended a professional game. And I, think it, I just think it's brilliant. One of my first, uh, I saw Derek Dugan score a hat-trick. That was back in the 60s. My dad took me uh, at Chesterfield yeah, for Peterborough. Dean, um, pressure's off a bit for reference. We're going to talk about a couple of incidents that you wouldn't want kids to see that, mm. that, that happened. Uh, one alleged spitting incident and a, another alleged uh, racist abuse on the field of play, and we'll focus on those. But overall... The pressure's off a bit for referees, it. Absolutely I, not. I mean, you know, it's a cup game. Um, yeah. Referees want to perform uh, the very best they can in any in any match. And the good thing about the FA Cup is the assessor's back. Mm. So no matter what game it is, we've got an independent assessor in the, in the stand who can give the referee advice. So yeah. if you look at the games that were played over the weekend, um, that was the most competitive third round of the FA Cup I can remember for for yeah. quite a while. So is it the games. same intensity as the Premier League for the guys that are used to going out there week in, week out in that pressure cooker? And can it explain an error occasionally or not? Well, I think sometimes, uh, let's take Anthony Taylor, who's had yeah. a, a run of top-level top matches. And uh, he goes to his game uh, involving Swansea. Mm. And uh, I thought his first dismissal was spot on. But then he seemed to relax and uh, he sent off the Swansea player for, for what for me was a, a reckless challenge, mm. uh, worthy of a yellow card, but not, not for a red. It was a trip on the halfway line, near enough, wasn't it? Right in the middle yeah. of the pitch. Which... Yeah. And I thought that might be that Anthony has had these pressurised games at top level. You know, he's just been uh, elevated to the elite level of FIFA. You expect every decision from a referee of that level to be accurate. On this one, his judgment was just awry. And I wonder whether the punchin won the week before. He wasn't the referee, no. but a lot of discussion around that challenge that came in from the back swiped out the player, whether that had influenced Anthony on this one. Because he, he came in quick. Yeah. Gave the red card quick and I think just got it wrong. That was in Wolves nil, Swansea nil, having sent off Wolves Ruben uh, Vinagre earlier, quite correctly, Dean. Um, yeah. Let's come on. Shall we, co shall, we, shall we come on to the major talking points? We go back all the way to Friday. And by the way, VAR, the first uh, video assistant referee in operation in the FA Cup, will review that uh, from the mm. Brighton Palace game next week on the Ref Show because the timing doesn't fit in with this one. Liverpool 2, Everton 1. Quite a lot of drama in this one. Um, discuss the penalty for pushing or, or, or grappling in, in a moment. But Everton's Mason Holgate and Liverpool's Roberto Firmino involved in this unsavoury scrap. Holgate pushed Firmino over at the advertising halls into mm. the crowd and the words were exchanged. It's alleged that some of those words from the Liverpool player were racist in nature. FA looking into it. How complex a task is it for the FA to look into this? Well, it's, ex it, it's extremely yeah. complex because it's basically one, one person's word against another. And the interesting thing uh, for me was, if you cast your mind back to, I think it was 2012, when Mark Clattenburg was involved with John Obi McKell and there was an allegation of racist comments uh, against Clattenburg, Mike Riley, the head of the PGMOL, came out, uh, produced an article in The Guardian and said very clearly from now on, conversations on the audio will be recorded to protect officials mainly from such allegations. Now it, it comes about that, that those conversations are not recorded. So the FA have got a mammoth task because mm. what they'll have to do obviously is look at the footage. The footage that I've seen was inconclusive. You couldn't see what, the, what was said. You could only see the, the reaction from the, uh, from, the, from the player. So I think it's a very difficult task that the FA have got to prove 
um, that a racist comment was was made. And I think we've got to be careful because, you know, it's an allegation, mm. and uh, and it's important that, that that that's the case. It is an allegation, and um, there's certainly Bobby Madley hasn't heard it because if he had have heard it, he'd have dismissed the player. Yeah, he was the referee. Keith, you're the man that introduced the communication kits. Mm. Um, uh, and certainly one query I had over the weekend, uh, is it an open channel all the time? In other words, can all the officials hear each other at any, uh, they don't have to press a button to... No, I mean, initially there were two systems, uh, Alan. We did look at the push button scenario to speak. The, the problem with that was when we had that with a few assistant referees, they couldn't find a button. <laughs> and, they, and, and so yeah. we changed immediately. Uh, we then had to develop the protocol how, what is said, how it is said, who gets the first bite. Mm -hmm. And in fact, referees have got, I, I, I did have the facility to listen in. Yeah. And you saw a, a, a rapid uh, improvement because initially everybody wanted to say everything, yeah. just to prove they're on the system. It then quietened down after about four weeks. It does work well. Mm -hmm. um, we did operate the recording system to help us in terms of the management, yeah. the management and psychology of the referees. And then FIFA said, quite categorically, you're not allowed to do that. Yeah. Uh, we got away with introducing it without going to the IFAB yeah. for its approval. Yeah. And suddenly th this was a bit of a bite back. So if we got here, if Firmino is guilty, of, of, of a, which we don't know, of a racist yeah. comment, that's an instant red card. Uh, would have been yeah. from Bobby Madley had he, Correct. Had he heard that. Yes. Um, retrospectively, you'd think maybe that in this open channel that maybe the fourth official or one of the other officials has heard if anything, well, towards Well, Alan, we're, we're, we're actually assuming here that the words <laughs> spoken by the player are English. Yeah, yeah. We've got lots of foreign players in the game. Yeah. And often, when they want to get a type of derogatory message across, even from my own experience as a referee, that's been said in their own language. And it's mm -hmm. usually the same two players from the same country. Now, not, not the case here, but... You know, let's just go back to the referee. I think Bobby Madley was put in a difficult position mm. because there was clearly players coming in and telling him that abusive language had taken place. It's hardly words uttered in a cathedral of calm and quiet either, is it? There's a lot of noise anyway. Uh, well, exactly so that. Really and then, he, then he's, got, he's got the tough task of identification, was it said, and he cannot guess. No. You know, you cannot guess these situations. Difficult situation. I think he went through a process. He looked slightly confused from a body language point of view, but then he'd already got to deal, he got to deal with a push. Yeah. And the push is, you know, if you talk to match officials, some have come down on the fact that this was a red card. This endangered the safety of an yeah. opponent, should have been a red card. The yeah. other officials say it should be yellow, mm -hmm. and that was sufficient. Um, so he's got that pressure as well as in, in, the intervening sort of reaction. Mm. The one thing I thought was positive as far as Madley was concerned was he got his body in the way. Mm. He's a big guy and he suddenly stopped any sort of real altercation. Prevented it escalating. But then so. finally, we say quite categorically, when a number of players come together in what might be seen as a bit of a mass confrontation, mm. he has to decide that. It looked that way to me and therefore we say to referees, a minimum two yellow cards in that situation. Mm. And I think that's what he should have done. I mean, okay. go, going back to your point, Alan, about the other officials, if they'd have heard anything, they would yeah. have brought it to the referee's attention. And I, think, and I think what Keith said there about the two yellow cards, this referee, from the first 10 minutes, it was clear he was trying to keep his cards in his pocket and it didn't add to his match control. He should never have been given the appointment. He's not a referee in form at the moment. Mm. And I think he was put in a very unfair position to be given that game in the first place. And he struggled. Right. I agree well, with that 100%. More about Liverpool-Everton, because the Liverpool penalty raises talking points as well. We'll deal with those in part two of the ref show. And the spitting allegation, Samuel Saiz of Leeds United was uh, sent off in their shock defeat at Newport County and potentially faces quite a, a long suspension mm. as, a, as a result of that. Congratulations, by the way, to Newport County and some of the other giant killers, I think we can call them that, uh, in the third round of the FA Cup. Peterborough United, 3-1 winners at Aston Villa. Mm. 
Coventry City, 2-1 winners against Stoke. That cost Mark Hughes' job, uh, sadly. Uh, Wigan Athletic did well to hold Premier League Bournemouth, 2-2. Uh, mm. Norwich, likewise, against uh, Chelsea. Fleetwood against Leicester. MK Dons, 1-0 win at QPR. So congratulations uh, to all of those. And Nottingham Forest as well. We have talking points from wow. their victory over Arsenal in part two of the Ref Show. And the 145 million astonishing uh, transfer fee that's going to take Philip Coutinho from Liverpool to Barcelona. Lots to come on the Ref Show with our two guests, Dima Harib and Keith Hackett. See you in a bit.